Okay, good evening. So, first of all, I'm not going to ask you whether uh, you are from computer program because it's DEFCON, man. <laughs> well, and uh, from second, I have seen a lot of uh, people here from uh, Bug Bounty. That's the reason why I stepped out of Bug Bounty and got into reverse engineering. Though I am not a pro, I am just a basic kid with reverse engineering stuff. And I am not going to bore you with uh, what is reverse engineering. Okay. So, and about Bug Bounty. So, whenever I log into Facebook, I will be seeing like, Allah I have got bounty. What? Man, seriously? Like, whenever I get bounty, I should be posting like, Oh, golly, I have got a bounty. Like, that, that's the main reason I have got out of bounty. Like, everyone gets into bug bounty and no one uh, looks into the other fields of cyber security. So, I'm here to present about uh, router reverse engineering and backdooring. Like, I'm not going to the stuffs like GDP and setting breakpoint. No, not like this stuff. So, I'll be uh, explaining the easiest way to backdoor the routers. And getting into the topic. To brag out me, I'm the head of OASP Coimuthur, though I won't conduct any security meets. And uh, I'm a technical member of Tamil Nadu Cyber Security Council and uh, I have a few Hall of Fames at random sites where every bug hunter will obviously have and uh, top 4 and OPPO and I own 4 uh, router series and a uh, few exploits in exploit DB and I have uh, published uh, 3 research papers on uh, network security, web application security and other cyber security domains in international journals so security researcher ok fine now, why should be reverse? Okay. So, to find whether the reverse, uh, the firmware is uh, backdoor. Like, if you are uh, downloading a firmware from internet, you have to reverse engineer before you're flashing it into your router to check whether it's backdoor or not. If it's not backdoor and you want to pawn someone, uh, your friend's router or uh, some un anonymous person on the internet, then you have to reverse. You have to reverse, you have to understand the process, you have to understand the file system, and then you can backdoor yourself. You can backdoor the router and just pawn them. And to understand the file system, as I said, to understand the file system, the flow and working of the, of the router. So, what happens when you understand them is that uh, it will help you to find few exploits and you can write uh, your own exploit, you can get CVEs. So, also you can customize your router login page, hacker login, blah, blah, blah. So, uh, I'm not gonna elaborate a lot since my talk is short. Uh, and from reverse to pawn, how it's going to be like, uh, let's set a target router like, for example, I have been using Archer C5 which is a product of TP-Link router. So, what we'll be doing is, uh, we can obtain the binary, we can obtain the firmware from internet or even from the router itself and uh, we have to analyze the router, analyze the firmware using certain tools which are pre-installed pre in the Kali Linux so or you can use your custom tools and what happens is, after in reverse engineering, you understand the file system, you understand the flow of code, you carve and analyze and you launch the exploit. You write your own exploit, you find vulnerabilities and exploit. So, getting into firmware. What is a firmware? What is a firmware? Firmware allows you to control the specific hardware. It's hardware sensitive. Like, you can't, uh, you can't install a firmware of uh, a router into another router. Like, it is hardware sensitive. And uh, a firmware, in complex devices, it acts as a uh, operation environment, whereas in, a, in less complex devices, it acts as a whole operating system. This is the basics of firmware, and obviously it's going to be held in uh, read-only memory. And most of the routers firmware are Linux-based. So, getting into the file system. So, uh, whenever we are uh, going to store some information and we're going to retrieve some information, that must be definitely a file system should be present. So this file system decides how a file is stored and how it is retrieved from the router. And the most common file systems in Windows are NTFS and FAT which you have obviously come across when you are using Windows. Whereas the common file system in Linux is Squash file system and uh, UBIFS. But most of the routers today will be using a Squash file system. Uh, the same goes for Archer C5 which is the router, uh, router's firmware which we are going to analyze now. And speaking about squash file system, uh, the squash file system uses uh, LZMA compression technique, which is a lossless compression technique. So this technique is used to, to compress the files and store in the router. And its extension is dot squash fs, and yeah, it's a compressed read-only system. 
yeah, it's used in most of the embedded uh, uh, distributions like IP camera and uh, open WRT and other router firmwares. Yeah, getting to reverse engineering, these are the most common tools which you would have even used in CDFs. Binwalk, Radar2, Hexdom, and now Gidra, NSA, and IDA Pro. Like, these are, most of the tools are pre-built, pre-installed in Kali Linux, you can use them. And uh, how we can extract the SquashFS file system is using these tools. Uh, and SquashFS, which is also pre-installed and uh, makes SquashFS, MK SquashFS. And for Windows, uh, we have 7-zip version 9.2 and uh, firmware mod kit, uh, which is a recent uh, tool. I'm not sure whether it's recent or not, but uh, it supports most of the versions of Squash file system. So we can extract as well as, as, well as build uh, firmware using this firmware mod kit. And this is the entire backdooring process. So what we're going to do is obtain the firmware either from the internet or from some other source, reverse engineer, and we're going to detect the file system to understand the flow. We're going to extract the file system, uh, and we're going to generate a payload to be executed on the, to be saved in the file system. And we're going to bind the file system, and we're going to rebuild the back, rebuild the firmware. Okay. So uh, before getting into the generation of payload, we must understand the MIPS architecture. Because what is MIPS? Uh, so as abbreviation states, microprocessor without interlock pipeline stages. Since I'm, I'm speaking about MIPS, I have to definitely speak about computer architecture, which is uh, basic for reverse engineering. And so what is MIPS? Okay, let's consider uh, uh, a, a MIPS processor. Okay, so a MIPS processor with the instruction set, which has instructions I0, I1, I2, and I3. So what happens uh, in a MIPS processor is, okay, before speaking about uh, MIPS, uh, I hope, you have basic knowledge about pipeline, okay? So a pipeline uh, has uh, two types, two st three-stage pipeline and a five-stage pipeline. So the picture depicted here is a five-stage pipeline which has instruction fetch, instruction decode, execution, read, write, these are the five stages. So uh, let us assume uh, this five-stage pipeline uh, in a MIPS processor. So what happens uh, when an instruction set containing instructions like I0, I1, I2, I3 uh, comes inside this MIPS processor is, uh, first instruction I0 from the instruction set will be applied to the fetch cycle and after completing the fetch cycle then it moves to the, the instruction I0 moves to the instruction decode cycle and the next instruction I1 comes into the instruction fetch cycle. So this is how uh, all the instructions process in a five stage pipeline and uh, each uh, instruction has its uh, designated clock cycle that is the concept of pipelining. Each instruction should get executed within the designated pipelines. So what happens if they does not execute? What happens? Like uh, assume uh, instruction I2 has a, a complex instruction like division of integers. What happens is that uh, the pipeline, that is the instruction next to I not, the next to I2, I3 and I4 will get stalled. That is these instructions I3 and I4 will not get executed in the designated clock cycles. So what happens there? A stall occurs. So this uh, defeats the purpose of pipelining. That is why uh, developers came with MIPS, microprocessor without interlocked pipeline stages. So without pipeline, we can execute the uh, instructions concurrently, simultaneously. We can achieve simultaneous uh, uh, execution of instructions. So yeah, with, the, with, with the interlocks, complex operations are time consuming. And other pipeline phases has to wait. Like each instruction has the designated clock cycles as I mentioned. And within the designated clock cycles, they have to be executed. If they not get executed, then it defeats the uh, concept of pipeline, right? So this is why uh, they have developed uh, MIPS. And uh, the, uh, most of the routers are based on this architecture, MIPS architecture. And uh, coming into the payload generation. So we have to know about uh, what is Little Indian, what is Big Indian. So while playing city of your you must have noticed like little indian is just a, a way of storing multi byte data types like for little indian we will be little indian is uh, exactly a vice versa of big indian we will be store, st uh, storing the data from uh, the end of big indian to uh, beginning like you can see it's the reverse of big indian big indian starts from 1 2 3 whereas uh, uh, little indian goes from 6 4 like this it's the reverse of uh, big indian and uh, speaking about ELF, it's just a common executable file, uh, common executable file for 
unique systems. So for generating a payload, you can use a MSF Venom, which has a pretty much a modules for all the operating systems. You can either use MSF Venom or you can go with your own pine shell, like the one developed by Osanda Malith, which is commonly used, I guess. Okay, setting up the handler, just the common steps. You can use the payload, set the L host, set the L port, exploit. That's it. So, what what happens after uh, creating your firmware is that you should uh, like the you should, uh, you should host the firmware in the internet such that uh, a victim downloads it and then uh, upgrades his router with your firmware. That's it. You get uh, the metaprater. So. I don't have uh, any router, but uh, I'm going to show you the steps of uh, payload generation. Okay, so I. Okay, so here, here as you can see, I have archer.bin file, which is a a firmware of Archer C5 router and I'm gonna reverse engineer it. So let's uh, use some basic tools like Binwalk to understand what is that file. Um, okay, so it has U-boot universal boot installed and uh, it has LSDMA compression data and as said, a squash file system. This router uses squash file system. So for in-depth analysis, we can use, we can just skip the part of uh, LSDM and we can get into the squash file system. Like uh, input file, for input file, we can use archer.bin. And output file is, uh, you can name it anything like archer1.img. You can name it to any extension. So, for uh, you, you have to use a block size. You have to mention the block size, which is obviously one, and you have to skip the part. You have to skip the part which you don't want. Like I'm not sure whether you can see the offset values here. Okay, so this is the offset of squash FS file system. So we'll just skip this. So hit enter, and now the part of the squash of the file system will be copied into the file named archer1.img, and it takes a bit of time. Okay, let's not wait until that. Uh, instead, uh, we'll see what are the payloads available in MSF Venom for uh, for pine shell. Okay, now as you can see, we have archer1.img, which is the output of the previous operation. Now we can again go with pinwalk. Now again, the LSATMA compression is zero and the offset of squash of file system, we have another uh, squash of inside it. So instead of uh, just repeating these steps, we have something called a firmware mod kit, which will extract the file system in seconds. So we can use that. Okay, so this will extract the firmware and it will uh, produce the squash of the file system in, in that folder called FMK. Okay, so these are all the payloads available in MSF Venom. So we can use uh, shell, metaprotor, like we can use the reverse TCP to handle our connection. Okay, now the extraction has been successful and you can see the folder named FMK here. Now let's get into FMK. We can see rootfs, which is the file system of the router. And ULS and that's it. Oh shit, I'm not sure whether you can see. 
So this is the file system of router. It's exactly as what you see in the Linux Linux file system. So for creating a backdoor, you can use MSO Venom or as I said, you can use Pine Shells. For creating a backdoor, I'll be using a, this uh, Linux MIPS Little Indian backdoor. I mean, before that, let's get into the etc. directory and uh, let's make it executable at the boot. Okay, so let's place our payload here. And just as usual, set the L host. I'm just showing for demonstration purposes. Sure. I'm just setting local host and L port set something, some random port and the format is in ELF as I said, executable format, F is ELF and name your backdoor, somewhat like backdoor, yeah, okay, hit enter and it will create a backdoor, now what you have to do is uh, rebuild the firmware, uh, publish it in our blog or wherever you want. And when someone downloads the firmware and uh, upgrades the firmware with your yeah, upgrades their router with your firmware, that's it. You get a session in your uh, router. Okay, the payload has been created. Fine. Now just give the permissions. Fine. That's it. Our backdoor has been uh, created and it's in right form to get executed. So now what we have to do is we should just build from uh, Yeah, that's it. The new firmware has been saved into the same directory where it is saved as new firmware dot bin. That's it. Thank you.